Welcome to the Imperfect Podcast. Nate discusses various topics through the eyes of a young Christian. The goal is to invite others to learn about Christianity through casual conversations with wonderful guests, especially people who want to grow in their faith. Maybe I want to be the passenger princess. You know what I'm saying? Drive me around. Before this episode begins, remember that none of us are perfect and that we are here to learn and help each other grow. Feel free to donate to Nate through Cash App at Imperfect Podcast. Make sure to follow the Imperfect Podcast on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. We hope you take something great away from this episode. Enjoy! Alright, welcome back to another episode of the Imperfect Podcast. My name is Nate Estrada. If you haven't been here, if you haven't met me before, I am a 20-year-old in college looking to spread the word of God to other individuals around my age through my eyes and my perspective of a young adult walking with Christ. And through previous episodes, you've seen that I've had a bunch of good guests. And today I got another one. I got Will, Will Diggs, AKA Will Keep It Real. Will, Will, go ahead and introduce yourself real quick. What's good guys, I'm Will, also known as Will Keep It Real. 20 years old as well. And I make content on both YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram um, at Will Keep It Real motivational content to be specific. All right, so let's take a talk about your journey from high school to where you are now. You already got a YouTube video about it, nice little lengthy video. Uh, mm -hmm. I, took a, I took a listen, it was real good. And honestly, when I watched, it was, it let me in on who you are and the way you felt mm -hmm. throughout high school. But go ahead and give a little quick summary of that video or how your life went from high school up until today uh so basically uh in high school i was kind of like always known as a class clown um it's kind of that funny dude in school everybody kind of knew me but excuse me i was never really like anybody's number one option i would say like i was nobody's like best friend i was nobody like the main character of a friend group um so it left me kind of changing myself to be who other people wanted me to be or who those who I looked up to. Uh, so like people like the athletes or people who I thought were like cool or whatever uh, made me change who I was in order to become the person who would get attention from them basically. Um, as I grew towards like junior, senior year, kind of grew out of that mainly because of COVID, um, just being at home a lot and kind of being on my own and kind of just like understanding maturing basically understanding who was and wasn't for me who was really a friend who really wasn't um and then soon into college got into a little situationship um <coughs> and i didn't know how to deal with it properly because it was like new to me it was like my first time going through something like that and i basically lost myself at the loss of somebody else so i lost track of my goals lost track of where i was headed to in life um I reached a state of bad state of depression where basically I just lost track of myself and where I was headed. Um, sitting in the house all day, um, my mind was my mind was just consumed by one person. And it was just like really affected me mentally. And it was just like I was just focused on this one problem, um, mainly because I was trying to figure out the solution to a problem that I, that was out of my control, essentially. I was trying to solve a problem that I came up with a million different um, conclusions. Like, I just didn't have the answers. And that's what left my mind racing. So, and then that got me into basically doing content creation eventually. Um, after going on a site, like healing journey, starting journaling, reading books, things like that. Trying to get my life back together, my mind back together. Um, content creation was one of the forms that allowed me to express myself, allowed to express how I felt, um, how I was feeling, the different perspectives I was picking up, the different things I was learning. And it just became a, a way in which I could take my pain and turn it into something that was purposeful. So, yeah, and that's led me to 477K on TikTok. Um, I'm almost at 500 on, 500 subs on YouTube, and I'm almost at 50K on Instagram. And that's pretty much where I stand today. Um, pretty much just took off with all that stuff. So 
So coming out of high school, I know, well, I don't remember exactly where you wanted to go, but me and you, we played, well, I played that one season, well, one game of football with you. But mm. I know you had, you want to be an athlete. Is that right? Facts. Facts. Yeah. So was there a point where you realized being an athlete wasn't for me and I had to, uh, I had to pivot to something else? And how was that realization? Um, that was tough. Um, so heading in the senior year, I dedicated basically my whole off season, my whole summer leading into senior year, my whole like end of junior year was kind of being dedicated to football. Like it was something I wanted to go all in on. I've always loved football. I've always been a person who discussed football, even when I wasn't playing it. Um, so heading into my senior year, I was like, I want to go to college. I know I can go to college. Like I was like doing one-on-ones. I was at the field every week. Like I was doing 400 push-ups in a day at one point during the summer. Like I was, I was serious about it. Like, I dedicated. I was banking on going to college to play football at the next level. Come senior year around, um, you know, we're having practices and stuff. I'm, I'm doing all right. Um, obviously, I'm starting. I'm a captain. All that good stuff. Um, but COVID's the issue at this point in time. Um, and so we end up only having one game. Well, we're supposed to have two games, but we only ended up having one because they canceled the second one. And after that first game, I had a great game defensively. Um, but that was all the film I had because that was my first year really playing. <coughs> so basically, um, yeah, the game got canceled, and then from there on, it was on me to basically get my film out there. So I took the film I had, which was like 10 plays. I had like 10 tackles that game. Um, I had to make the most out of it because coaches basically didn't put in any effort to try and get anything more, whether that was a spring season, whether that was 7-on-7. Seven seven. Um, so it was essentially on me. And it, it got to a point where I realized – I didn't want to go to college for football because all the offers I was getting were walk-on positions at D3s or they were like, we want you to play, but we're not going to have you on a scholarship, basically, where it was like, we want you to pay 50, 60K to come to the school and then play football, which to me was pointless because I I just became honest with myself and I was like, once I'm done with um, football season, I'm going to be depressed again and just kind of not into it. Like football, football was the only reason I even wanted to go to school, honestly. Outside of that, it was like I knew for a fact I didn't want to go and I didn't know what I wanted to do. So once football was kind of out the window, it was like, dang. Um, It took me a little bit to get over it. Um, It got me into the gym. So that was kind of my introduction into the gym, kind of losing football and getting over that hump and, getting into working out again. Um, but yeah, that, that kind of just had me bummed out because I was really looking forward to having a season and showing out. But had I had that not happened, I wouldn't be where I, where I am today. So that's kind of how I look at it. You are in a good place right now with your platform, your following, you are in a good place. But do you ever get those thoughts where you wish you didn't make it to the next level, you possibly made it to the NFL? Uh, NFL, nah. I, um, that's not something I'm really disappointed in. That was obviously like my dream as a kid, which it is for a lot of kids. And as you grow, you just kind of come to realization and become honest with yourself. But I definitely think I could have played D1 ball or D2 ball, um, at a high level. Like, I think I had that capability. Um, it It's sometimes I reminisce and I'm like, damn, I just, I wish, or dang, my bad. Um, I wish I could, like, get another chance or whatever. But honestly, I don't regret it. I still play football to this day. I still have friends in high school and in college who play and we go to the field, whatever. And honestly, that's good enough for me. Um, I just, I just love the sport overall. Yeah, I feel that. So. Yeah, I think you and I, I'm not going to say we're similar, but we kind of had a little bit of similar paths. Like, going into college, mm. 
I thought I was going to be a full-on computer scientist going on mm-hmm. into data analytics, stuff like that. But mm-hmm. something happened my freshman year that made me hit rock bottom for the first time. And I ain't never felt that that low in my life. And that really threw me off academically, mentally, a little mm-hmm. bit physically. But somewhat similar to you, that's what got me into the gym. But also, mm-hmm. it was kind of that, it was kind of a point where I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life because I was going through a situation on top of that, all this computer science stuff was beating me mentally. That was hard. Mm. And I had to take a step back and realize, what am I doing with my life? Am I going to spend the next mm. 30, 40 years sitting on a computer coding, putting myself through mental hell? And mm. I had to take a step back and realize I need to get out of this. So I ended up switching majors and I ended up going into sports media analytics because I thought, like you said, I love football, you love football, I love sports, that's what drives me, that's what motivates me, honestly, to mm. think and use my brain. Because I know I can argue sports more than I can argue history or stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But even then, I was like, what am I doing with this? How is this? What am I going to do with my life with this? Then content mm-hmm. creation came around. Like this podcast, I didn't even... Mm-hmm. This happened within the span of a day. Like, I literally got the mm-hmm. idea in my brain. I was like, God is telling me to do this. So literally in the day, I made this podcast. But mm-hmm. in your journey, did you ever hear God or question God at all as mm-hmm. like, as to where your life was going, as to what your future holds? Yeah, bro. Honestly, one of the biggest lessons I learned was everything I was going through had a purpose to it. Like, I realized that... Um, and I gain. I started to gain the perspective of everything happening right now is happening, whether it's a lesson he's trying to teach me, whether it's this temporary person coming into my life that takes me through these series of events in order to, for me to learn certain different things. Like it's all necessary in order for the bigger things he has planned for me later in life. Like, like I wouldn't know patience if I didn't have to go through an experience where I had to learn the lesson of patience so now when I get this greater thing later in life I have I've learned the lesson of patience in order to know how to maintain it in order to properly know how to take care of it and things like that um but you know I had to go through those past events in order to learn those things um and all those those past events might hurt in the moment like all that that pain is temporary and you're gonna see why it was ne- a necessary part of your journey, like later down the road. And you're just gonna realize, like, it was a, it was a reason God put that person in my life for that set amount of time. It was a reason God put me in that place, put me in that event, that scenario, whatever. Like, cause that that lesson was essential for the bigger blessing He has for me. Yeah, my last one of my last Bible studies I had, we were just talking about that. In Ecclesiastes mm-hmm. chapter 3 It talks about a time for everything Like there's a time mm-hmm. for war Time for peace, time for breaking up Time time for building up, time for breaking down And it mm-hmm. says Everything On this earth Served its beautiful purpose Within God's timing And mm-hmm. I, That's literally something I was also thinking about today Like a lot of things Happen and we may ask God why are why are we going through depression? Why are we going through poverty? But mm-hmm. everything, like you said, everything that happens has a purpose and has a lesson. Even when I'm going through rough times, I'm telling myself, there, God has me going through this for a reason. And there's a lesson to be mm-hmm. learned and there's a good outcome to be discovered. And mm-hmm. it's all about, it's almost like a game of connecting the dots in the end. Mm-hmm. When you get to that point where you do realize, I went through all that for this reason. You'll completely, under, you'll completely understand why God does what he does. Like, people always question why God makes us go through hard times. Why do we lose loved ones? And that, like, the, that last question, we may not have the answer to. But we go through all those tough times because God wants to make us stronger. And mm-hmm. we go through turmoil because if God just gave it to us, we wouldn't, we wouldn't know how to grow. We wouldn't know how to be strong. Life would be too easy. Yeah, we wouldn't appreciate anything, bro. Like, like you appreciate things, um, things gain value from 
you put in the time and effort and energy into it. Like, say, say I've I've been doing content creation for almost two years now. Like, I can't allow anyone to just come into my life and take that away from me or think like I can make that a lesser priority or make them a priority over it because I know the amount of time I spent on this. I know how much work I put into this in order to grow it into what it is. So things gain value, things like feel good to you. They they make you essentially maintain it and actually appreciate it that much more when you go through the struggle, you go through the work because you know everything it took for you to get to that point in your life, basically. Yeah, one of my teachers last semester, I kind of questioned it, but he said the beauty about the future is you don't know what's going to happen and mm-hmm. you get the chance to discover it. And mm-hmm. to me, I thought that's kind of that's a crazy thing to say because the future could be good or bad. But recently, my pastor, he gave a sermon on faith and mm-hmm. Hebrew says faith is believing that God will give you what he promised and also believing in what you cannot see. Yep. And I connect that Facts. to what my professor said. And you think about it like oxygen too. Scientists tell us we need H2O to live. We don't know what mm-hmm. oxygen looks like. We're just walking in it. Same thing with mm-hmm. God. We don't know, we've never seen God. We don't know what he looks like, but we know he's real. So yeah. trusting God through the process is a very big lesson that's taught through life. Some people will give up on content creation because the following is low. They're not seeing progress people don't support mm-hmm. them. That's something I'm going through. And mm-hmm. I'll admit, I'm getting, I be getting a lot of thoughts of doubt. Like, am I really supposed to be doing this with my life? And mm-hmm. is this really my future? But mm-hmm. I know it's all about faith. And every time I keep going, doors open, progress is made. Mm-hmm. Progress may be small, support may be low, but it's something. Something is better than nothing. Like one of my mm-hmm. friends, he, he also has a podcast and he had a guest on and they said, mm-hmm. The people that are willing to look stupid, whether it be content creation, making music, making movies, the people that are willing to look stupid are the ones that are gonna get their foot into the door and keep walking. Mm Because a lot of people don't wanna look stupid. They don't wanna put themselves out there and Mm -hmm. be judged. But us being out here and doing all this content creation and stuff like that, well, you're, you're you're an example of putting yourself out there you got almost 500k on tiktok almost 50k on instagram it's all about trusting Mm -hmm. god and you'll get to where you want to be yeah it's also about enjoying it bro like um like i enjoy what i do like i feel like like when i first started out i was just even if it was like five followers a day or 10 followers over the course of two weeks like i started gaining people DMing me uh, saying I appreciate your videos your videos help me and that's honestly what kept me going like people acknowledging that what I was doing was actually bringing value bringing value to them like I thought Um, so having it from the perspective of even like if you have a vision for yourself even if it could just help one person five people ten people like that's you're still making an impact a valuable impact on people in this world um and that's what kept me going bro like now it's like people count on my videos count on seeing my videos people look forward to seeing my videos like it's something that's part of their daily routine i have people who scroll through my videos throughout the day or on days and it it like grounds them and reminds them of things they might be getting away from um and that's what keeps me going, bro. Um, Cause I have people counting on me to basically deliver something great for them, go deliver something valuable to them that helps them mentally, that helps them in life, that helps them from making that wrong decision that could change their life forever, that helps them um, think outside of their emotions. Like, you know? It's crazy that you say that because that's literally what keeps me going too because like I said, my following is a lot smaller compared to yours. But mm-hmm. when I have these Bible studies, I be having the same two people. <coughs> Their names are Dom and Zoe. Actually, well, you know Dom. 
Well, you went to a school for that. Dom yeah. Mumford? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he be coming to my Bible studies and our other friends, Zoe, and some of my other mm-hmm. friends, too, occasionally. But mm-hmm. it's always either them two or them three or the usual four that always come. And I'm trying to have a great audience. I'm trying to have 20, 30, 50 people so that I can spread the word of God to them, help them, and help them get right in their faith. Mm-hmm. And last week, I honestly didn't feel like doing Bible study, but mm-hmm. I did it because I knew there's one or two people that are always scheduling 8 p.m. free on their Thursdays to spend it with me talking about the Bible. Mm-hmm. And last week, it was me and three other guys, Dom plus two mm-hmm. other guys. And mm-hmm. after that, well, even while we were having Bible study, I had to take a step back and realize there's four of us in here, four black men mm-hmm. in here talking about God, talking about the Bible. Mm-hmm. That's that right there is huge, because mm-hmm. a black man isn't portrayed to be a religious man. Nowadays, a black man is seen as a threat or seen as someone that's in the streets and not doing good with their life. But the fact that I'm mm-hmm. sitting here with fear of black men talking about the Bible shows me that. I'm doing well, and there is a purpose in what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Even with my podcast, like I always go through and look at my viewers. It's not a lot, but I can see the locations. And every mm-hmm. time I see that I got a new location or that I have somebody that's always watching an episode, it shows that there's someone mm-hmm. paying attention and the audience mm-hmm. is growing. Like, for mm-hmm. example, I had somebody recently in Japan watch and if mm-hmm. I got somebody watching Japan, I know that there's people that are trying to listen, people that want my help. So stuff like mm-hmm. that. I got people in Japan, Belgium, uh, Canada, people all over the world that are listening. So stuff like mm-hmm. that, that is that does help me keep going, knowing that my audience is growing slowly, but there are those who support. Yeah, facts. Yeah, I have a I have a big following in um South Africa. Yeah, I get I get people from all over the world, bro. It's it's crazy. Um, you never know who's watching, bro. That's why you, that's why you really gotta stay consistent. Anything could pop at any moment. Um, <coughs> take the results you get. Um, learn learn how you can become better. Always be looking like how can you improve? How can you become better? Um, how can you like study study other people? Um, like for the longest. You know, I didn't, I didn't, I had like a $200 camera. Um, like everything I have now, like the investments I've made, um, it wasn't always like that. Um, but I, I was always looking for how can I improve? Um, it's just structure my concept be, to become better and better, bro. And I stay consistent. Um, I didn't, I didn't, I, I just made a YouTube video on this today, like, a lot of people look for the approval of others in order to pursue a vision they see for themselves. So, like, maybe they have an idea and they go, hey, what do you think of me doing this? Or um, do you think I'm able to do this? Or what's your thoughts on this? Like, they're they're seeking, they're letting other people's opinions basically determine whether they take action or not. And I realized, like, you can't do that because what if someone tells you no, like, does that does that mean you're not going to pursue that vision you have for yourself? And I like to define visions that we have as places we see ourselves capable of reaching with the gifts that God has given us. So, like, I don't think you have a vision for you at that high place or on that big stage or in that big place speaking at an event, whatever. I don't take those things lightly. I think it's like you have those for a reason because God's trying to tell you, like, these are, these are the heights you're capable of reaching. Like I've gifted you with the tools, all the tools necessary to be able to reach that height. You just have to put in the action to basically get there. Um, and so when you go to others saying, hey, what do you think? Or looking for advice, like what was your experience when you tried out content creation or something? Like people are gonna project their fears. People are gonna project their results onto you, bro. If you got a vision for yourself, bro, you, just, you just gotta go after it, bro, and stick to it. Um, and that's what I did. Like, there was people calling me corny at one point. They didn't care. Um, some people are like, oh, like, are you a motivational speaker now? In a, in a sarcastic way. I still get that today. Oh, you you a motivational speaker. Oh, you do you do content, Mr. TikTok guy. Um, 
and bro, you just got to ignore it. Like, stick to it. Um, when you ignore it, people people end up leaving you alone because they can't, they see they can't affect you. They see they can't, they're not able to stop you. Um, <coughs> and a lot of times it's because they see you doing more work than them to the point that they try to downplay what you doing because they not doing enough personally for themselves. Um, so, yeah. Or you just got to stay consistent, bro, even when the results aren't showing. Yeah, I have thought about that recently, like the opinions of others. There are those mm-hmm. few people that I trust uh, t- to share their opinion, but at the same time, there's those that I don't trust, um, mm-hmm. whether it be them trying to put me down or doubting me or whether them not having the same vision or mindset as me. Like something mm-hmm. I noticed with this is... I have a very big vision. I have a great imagination. And I don't want to call it imagination because everything I see that God shows me, I know eventually I'm going to bring it to life. It's just going to take some Mm -hmm. time. But I'm dedicated to all this. And when sometimes we allow the opinions of others, others, it may be negative Mm -hmm. and it may, it may, uh, it may hold you back or stop your momentum. Like my, Mm -hmm. my motto to myself was, I'm unstoppable. Like, Mm -hmm. and my logo for my YouTube channel with like gym content stuff, I put on there, I'm unstoppable. Because every time I push out more content where I feel like I put out a good message, I feel like I'm gaining momentum and I can't be stopped. And Mm -hmm. every time I do this, like, I really don't feel like I could be stopped. And when Mm -hmm. my my visions, my imagination keeps growing and growing and growing, like even recently Mm -hmm. this year, I got this really, really big plan that I know it's going to take some time, but I have a really big plan that I know I'm going to bring to life, but I only share Mm -hmm. it with certain people that I know that I can trust. And I also want them to help me with it. So I understand who's to trust and who's not to trust as far as opinion based uh, interaction. Yep. When I first started, bro, I didn't tell nobody. Um, if actually, um, the only person I did share really with was um, Ava, and I told I showed her my first video. Um, I got her opinion on it, and then I started posting. It. I would like get her opinion on videos. But other than that, bro, I wasn't telling nobody. Um, and she she really was the only one who I was sharing info with, and like saying I like I. I go to her, I'd be like, what do you think of this merch? What do you think of this idea? What do you think of this YouTube video? What do you think of this intro? What do you think of this new camera setup, lighting, things like that? Because I know like she gonna be honest, but she also gonna like keep me going for real, for real. But yeah, a lot, you can't tell your visions to everybody, bro, because not everybody gonna support it. Not everybody gonna some people gonna tell you what you want to hear, but not really mean it. Um, and then some people, it's just it's pointless to even share with them because they end up using it against you. Like when y'all on bad terms, you know, that's why your podcast doing terrible and stuff like that. Like unnecessary things that you can avoid. Whereas, like, bro, if you just if you just take action on it and do you, bro, it's a lot more peaceful, bro. So if, especially if it's something you enjoy. Like it's way easier to block the haters out if you you don't even tell people you don't give something for them to hate on really. Like when I started, um nobody nobody really knew. Nobody nobody expected it, I should say. Like nobody expected me to just like randomly start doing that type of content. Um because like I said, bro, I was always I was always that class clown person. I was always that joking person, like so to see that whole other side of me after the work I had been putting in with my personal personal self, reading books and things like that, starting journaling, stuff I wasn't even posting, stuff I wasn't even talking about, sharing with nobody. Like when I popped out with the results from that, like the whole new mindset I had, like it surprised a lot of people. It, it had them off guard. They was like, what the heck? Like I never seen the side of Will. It's like a whole new different person. Some people supported it, some people didn't. But it was like, this is me, and that's what I'm doing. I didn't let nobody stop me. I wasn't 
entertaining other people's opinions. If people commented something, saying, oh, you corny, or, oh, I don't agree with you, I would ignore them. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I never fed into the negative energy, bro. Especially because I had to, I had to prove myself right. Like, you know, I can't, I can't be preaching. You know, you got to keep going. You got to keep striving through the challenges and adversities, and then give up when I start getting criticized or I'm not getting the results I want. You know, that that's me going against my own word. That's me breaking my own promise to myself. Hey, it's good that you had someone like Ava be honest with you, and at the same time give you good direction because that is also a type of person you need in your life you need that person that's going to be honest with you but give you constructive criticism at the same time they're going to give mm-hmm. you some good direction like mm-hmm. my one of my previous guests ross gardner he makes music he'd be mm-hmm. he'd be sending me his beats his music lyrics i would write some lyrics for him he asked me mm-hmm. opinions and I would give him some good criticism. I didn't know it's a bad habit that I had was I would say, yo, this is hard. This is fire. I like this. I'm rocking with this. Yep. Now I realize there are some things I don't like. Mm-hmm. So you got to open up and be more honest. <coughs> and his brother, too, he would send his music in a group chat. And the whole group chat would go like, yo, this is fire. You need a drop. And he would be like, y'all need to stop before all those fake comments and give me some real criticism because I'm not perfect. And y'all got to give me some critiques. I came to y'all because... I know you're honest, so give me some honesty. And then from yeah. that point on, the whole group chat just switched up and got more specific with what they liked or more specific with the things that he needed to fix. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's the type of people you need around you, bro. Like You can't grow. You can't become better if everybody's already telling you you're, you're good the way you are. When obviously you aren't if you ain't at that top level or ain't seeing the results you need to be seeing like if you was if you was really that good like you want people around you who like uh, guide you on the right path um which yeah man I, re- I remember like my first results um like my first video going viral um i was i was with her and her mom i was like dang bro like the person who like who like kind of helped me get into it like was approving of my videos and like saying oh keep at this and stuff like this like i shared i shared i shared that first moment of like seeing yeah i'm capable of doing this like getting that feeling of yeah this is for me like i shared it with her like that was that was crazy like that's the moment i will never forget all right i want to go back to what you said about uh dang what you say Oh, like you said, you said people didn't really know that you would do this or didn't expect this mm-hmm. from you. That was kind mm-hmm. of me too. Like mm-hmm. I'm known as the quiet introvert that wouldn't speak up. It was awkward, you know. People don't want really want to talk to me. And then even about being a Christian, when I started this, some of my friends were like, dang, they I even know you were religious or serious about your serious about your christianity and part of that was mm-hmm. on me because i didn't show that part of me i didn't show the christian side of nate i was just more a general neutral person mm-hmm. but even when i did this podcast when i first made that announcement there was a good amount of support and i didn't want to tell certain people like i didn't want to tell i didn't want to not tell my parents but mm-hmm. I just kind of kept it because mm-hmm. I felt embarrassed a little bit. But eventually, about three episodes in, I sent it to my mom and my grandfather. And they were real supportive of it, and they're still very supportive of it. And mm-hmm. my mom's the one that got me this camera, this mic, another mic. She's been very supportive of my content creation. And mm-hmm. even my friends, they, some, some of my friends, they really motivate me, really support me a lot. But I will say there's a bunch of, there is negativity that like creeps in. Like people will say, oh, Nate, I support you. I'll show up to your Bible studies and listen to your podcast, blah, blah, blah. And then nothing. Like no showing up to Bible study. I can <coughs> see who's, can't see specifically who, but 
I'd be seeing the amount of people that watch and based off the amount of people that say they're watching, mm-hmm. it don't be adding up. Mm-hmm. But that is one of the biggest obstacles I've had is to support the mm-hmm. people just ignoring your posts. Like I'll be posting my story all the time about Bible studies, my new episodes. And I'll expect people to buy into all the things I do, but it does get exhausting when you're being ignored. And that's kind of mm-hmm. something that did happen to me in high school a lot, like me being ignored by a bunch of people and not being taken serious. Mm-hmm. But like you said, popping out with the results. I say my biggest result that I've had in my life is my weight loss. Like in high school, I was big. Mm-hmm. Like probably the biggest in the school and then nah you weren't <laughs> yeah maybe top five maybe top I five don't, I can't even remember bro I'm not gonna lie <laughs> it, we were you had a small enough school where you could probably count the amount of big people in your hand but I'd say before COVID I was definitely one of the biggest and COVID hits I lose a few pounds I come back to school I remember Cole seeing me he was like yeah, you look great, bro. Like, good work. And then, mm-hmm. come graduation, I lose some more. And then, come, like, this past summer, I see a few people. They're like, dang, they, I didn't even recognize you. Like, lost mm-hmm. all that weight, your hair longer. Mm-hmm. Changed. Like, mm-hmm. that's my biggest result. And I'm glad I got some content for that. But, showing the results. And even, I look forward, I look forward to the day when... Everything I do is to where the point where you are, you're a big following, mm-hmm. you're reaching out to a grand audience. Because I don't do this mm-hmm. for fame, I do this for the impact of people's lives. I'm looking to change exactly. lives and bring people to Christ. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Even if they aren't Christian, I'm trying to make them a better person. But mm-hmm. I look forward to the point where I am successful in this, with this, and I do have a lot of supporters, but. Not to say I resent those that didn't support me when I was not at my highest, but I look forward to that point where everybody does say, oh, I always knew Nate was going to be there, but I felt no support from these people at all. And I don't say Mm -hmm. that to be prideful. I just say that to say, don't hate me. Don't say you love me now just because I'm famous and and successful. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, bro. Um, to that I say, cause people people are gonna disappoint you with their words a lot, bro. People are gonna wanna, again, people are gonna tell you what you wanna hear. People are going to make a bunch of false promises. Um, and you gotta understand that um, people don't owe you anything. Like, people aren't obligated to watch my videos. People are obligated to watch your videos. People are obligated to buy from buy whatever product or service I'm selling. People same goes for you like you can't get discouraged from other people not living up to their word because at the end of the day it's their choice like there's some there's still people who follow my personal instagram but don't follow my constant instagram i have no hate towards them i don't even take it as they don't like me as a person or don't like my content or don't even support me from a distance um it's kind of just like bro it's their choice like Everybody has their own personal lives and things they're going after, their own values and morals. And I can't hold an expectation for who I want them to be and then get upset when they don't live up to that expectation. Um, all you could do really is, is value the ones. I like I, I use this analogy or this metaphor of don't end up losing the ones who got you focusing on the ones who don't got you so don't end up if one if one sheep leaves the flock bro don't go chasing after that one sheep and end up losing the hundred sheep you left behind like value the ones who actually do support you value the ones who are there for you consistently show up for you consistently show their support they're showing up the bible study they're liking your post they're showing your sharing your post or whatever like value those people and Whoever else is, whoever is out of the mix, bro, don't don't focus on. Them. Like, 
it's out of your control other people's decisions to support you or not and you shouldn't like try and force your hand on other people in order to try and prove yourself to them prove why they should support support you like you just gotta let them do them yeah I, i've definitely been keeping that mindset and it does it does get it gets hard to keep that mindset sometimes like like you said i don't have any resentment towards those who don't support me but i do love those who do support me and mm -hmm. i definitely keep those people close to my heart mm -hmm. yeah exactly all right i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna wrap it up soon been going for a little minute but to wrap it up i got 10 questions for you let's go for it you can answer these as vaguely or as shallow as you like. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Some of these are simple, some of these are big. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite color? Orange. Orange and black. All right, favorite song right now? It's a great one. Um, <sighs> favorite song right now? Jeez. I'm looking. Let's go. Since, uh, since ninth grade by Tusi. Who's your favorite athlete? Uh, John Wall. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Uh, public speaker, still doing motivation, big on YouTube, and a big personal brand. I won't say TikTok or Instagram because I don't know if they'll still be around, but I'll have a big personal brand for sure. What do you hope to accomplish by the age of 50? Age of 50. Wife, kids, um, good environment, um, good investments, good career, leaving an impact on the world, people knowing my name for a specific thing, uh, people being a big reason behind the, the, the turning point in people's lives so whether that's turning the positivity or making a, a major change in their life like being a big reason they they took action on that thing and then being in being secure and being at a, a comfortable position where i'm able to provide whatever whenever and not being in like a financial stress stressful situation that's good. What does success look like for you? Um, leaving an impact on people, man. Like, like I said, like being the turning point in people's lives. Um, freedom, being able to do what I want whenever I want. <coughs> I don't want to be a millionaire, billionaire, billionaire, but I want to be comfortable. I want to be able to provide my the people around me with what what they want or as much as um, as much of what they want and i don't think you're ever truly reach a point where you're just set on success um because i always think there's room to grow and there's room to improve and i think i'll always be a person striving to be better If you were given a billion dollars right now, what would you do with it? Billion dollars right now? Probably invest in real estate properties, um, put it into some form of interest gaining account. So whether that's um, bonds or is it bonds where you like give your money to the bank basically and it gains interest whatever that is i would i would get into that um probably 
I, I'm not a I'm not a materialistic person, so honestly, I, I might buy a house or I might buy literally just rent an apartment at the top of a building in some city. Um, other than that, bro, take care of my moms, my family, get all of them situated, and then keep doing what I do. I don't think I would let it change me or I don't I don't think I would let it like make me lazy or stop doing pursuing the things I want to pursue because I could get a billion dollars. But if I'm still not doing those speaking engagements, still not leaving impact on people's lives, then I'm going to still strive towards achieving those things. Uh, what's your favorite restaurant? Favorite restaurant? Um, <coughs> I don't really be going out a whole lot. I was... Let's just say BJ's Restaurant Bar and Grill. I think that's what it's called. Uh, favorite clothing brand? Clothing brand? Nike. Would you rather be trapped in a mall with a gorilla or two black mambas for 24 hours? A gorilla or two black mambas, a mall, mall, or nah, <laughs> black mambas, black mambas. All right, well, that's it. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Uh, before I end it, you want to say anything? You got any questions for me? Uh bro. Um, honestly, to you and to anyone, like, if you're going after a goal, if you're going. If you see a vision for yourself, keep keep chasing that vision. Embrace the failures. Embrace the not getting the results you want. Um, keep track of your growth. Take note of where you started and where you are now. And applaud yourself for that growth. Um, have delayed gratification. Like You may want something by a certain point, but at that certain point, you might not even be ready to have it. So understand that. But I also see it as that doesn't mean you quit. That doesn't mean you let your foot off the gas. Like, truly go for the things you want in life, especially at this age. Um, Because you never want to look back and regret wishing you you kept pursuing something or uh, regretting wasting your potential for the things you, you saw you were capable of achieving later in life. Like, Pursue what you want now while you have the time, while you're young, while you can still recover and still have time to get started on things in life. Like, take as many risks as possible right now before you, like, get thrown into the world where it becomes 10 times harder because you have rent, you're working a job, whatever. Like, take the risk now. That's good. That's real good. All right, I really appreciate you for joining me tonight. Appreciate you for dropping some wisdom here tonight. Um, appreciate you, bro. Y'all follow Will. Y'all might follow him already. Y'all follow Will. Keep it real on Instagram and TikTok. Follow the Imperfect Podcast, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. And again, my name is Nate Estrada. And this is the Imperfect Podcast. Thank you for watching.